George Hit Hard Hillion! Welcome back to another episode of the Multipliers Club. This week on the pod, we have a very special guest, George Hilliard, AKA Gorgeous George, AKA The Grill, AKA George Hit Hard Hilliard. Get an honest insight with a bare knuckle boxer who in his early years was signed by the famous Barry Hearn in a 15 million pound fighting contract. He's trained with the likes of the Mayweathers and he relocated back to the UK after living his best life up in Vegas for a couple of years. Now, George just took time out of filming his documentary to be with us, and I can guarantee you one thing, this conversation won't only blow your mind, it will have you strapped to the edge of your seat for the whole time. That's George hit hard Hilliard, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. By the way, I never gave my name. <laughs> you wanted gorgeous Scott, George, but no, they gave no, you that. No, 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 Sky, <laughs> Sport, Sky Sports named that. Did they? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, I, I was, obviously, I was, and, um, yeah, it was just, my life just went, Mentally, just absolutely, yeah, it just went uh, So I blew you into the mainstream. Yeah, it's just like, I was just a normal, I am mean, like, oh, um, you know when you just, just some Joe Bloggs walking down the street the next minute, like, you're going to Lakeside and everyone's like, how can I have your autograph? And you're like, how? <laughs> I, on the train, everyone thinks I'm fucking Wayne Rooney. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, That's life, why they wanted your autograph, they yeah, put you away. Yeah, life, yeah. Life, life, life changed, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. It was never a dull moment, put it that way. <laughs> yeah, that's mad. So I just literally overnight, just yeah, just oh, yeah. And then then we boxed in Scotland. The first one was at Gorsbrook Leisure Centre, and they put me in Scotland. How many people watched that one? Oh, millions. Oh, was that televised? Uh, yeah, right, 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 right. And then they, they put me on Sky Sports again in Scotland at Kilcardy, and a boxy Irish fella, and I blew him out in one minute. 13 and it was like everyone was like this geezer is just animal yeah and <laughs> they put me against Ernie Smith that I had it was my third fight with him and they he had 112 never been like he only been stopped once but he, he was a tough man he just took everyone the distance and um I walked out in the first round I thought oh, do you know what? so I went I'll be the first to knock him out don't I <laughs> just just young cocky and um, I hit him with the biggest right hand. <laughs> he went at me, good shot, son. <laughs> <laughs> he went, good shot, son. And um, I kissed him on the cheek just to say, look, you ain't bothering me. And the referee went, bam, tempted by it. And give the Attempted yeah, by it? Thought, Giving yeah, the guy a kiss? Yeah, yeah kiss him there. And then at the end of the fight... He just tried to wind him up. Took a, took a point off me for it. And when, when the, at, the, at the end of the fight, he went, I walked over to Ernie Smith and went, it was his hand. And it kicked off massively. It was only at your call, but which was what thirteen hundred people, mm. and it, all the TV. It, was, it, it just kicked off. What, like, what happened when it kicked off? And just started fighting. Yeah, like well, everyone booing, like taking, pulling the chairs off the, yeah, you know, Joe, you know, just yeah. smashing, like right, all bits. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. It was just um, silly, but all because of a, uh, and that that kind of ruined my career into us, where I couldn't become. I couldn't become my character. Like his, his face after looked like he'd been hit by a bus. And um, yeah, but they give the fight to him and it just, and it, they were, then it was on Sky Sports, it all become, oh, hopefully this is grounded, made George, grounded George a bit. Because I did, I got in there a bit like a Nazim kind of flashness, but took it a bit beyond that, if that makes sense. Mm. So, uh, how old are you at the time? I was, what, 20? 20, 20 years old. you made your debut, yeah. or? No, I made my, uh, sorry, 21. I made my debut at 21. And then them two fights I had back to back. And, um, so on the 16th of June, 2005, Goswick Business Centre, that's when I, I boxed uh, um, uh, from, the fellow from Wales, Gerrit Harvey, and um, I knocked him out in 42 seconds. And then as I got out of the ring, Sky Sports were, all, were on us. And Jesse Harding, like the ex-WBC champion, and he was part promotion with the team. He went, you're sick. He went, I'm sure you just broke Mike Tyson's record. And the crowd, everyone was just going mental. I was just like, didn't have a clue what he was going on about. He went, I'm sure he's broke the record. So they got like got all the things up. And I was like, no, you're six seconds off of it. Oh, I was like, six seconds close. off of breaking. And that was on the, I said, 16th of June, 2005. And on the 18th, my life just went like I signed up 
a 15 million pound contract over five years with Barry and Matchroom Sport. Life just changed just like that. It was absolutely mental. Just going back to that, so how how did Barry Hearn find you? Was he scouting upcoming well, boxers? Believe it or not, or? I used to play football for Barry right. as a young kid. And um, I had trials for uh, Leighton Orient because he owned Leighton Orient at the time. And then, um, but my my trainer, and he was my manager at the time, um, was he boxed for Barry as a, a match from sport. Mm. But he retired and now become a trainer. And he was like, listen, and obviously I was quite big in the, I just missed out on the 2004 Olympics. So I was like, do you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn, turn pro now. So I'm, I'm at that stage you now. There's nowhere else for me to go but turn pro. So we, Barry, uh, um, it, I got introduced to Barry by by my trainer and um, and manager at the time, and um, he said, "Well, I'll put you on the show on the 16th." Uh, and yeah, it all went absolutely like I just couldn't believe how it went from being a nobody to. Or suddenly being like a, they're ready to put billboards up everywhere. Wow! It was just, it was just a mad. But as quick as I got it all, as quick as I lost it all, is, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 How, how, how does it work with like a? So you sign a fifteen million pound. I'm just trying to break it down in simple terms. Yeah. Yeah. Fifteen million pound contract over five years. Yeah. How does that work? So yeah, you he, have he to gave me the same agree. Contract. Yeah, sorry. He, sorry, no, I'm sorry, I'll keep interrupting you. He gave me, he gave me the, the same contract as Chris Eubank Senior. So that's that what I was mad. Yeah, and, um, but he's like, so this fight, so this fight will give you, I'll just use an example, uh, we're going to give you 10 grand for this fight, then the next fight will be 20 grand, the next fight will be 30 grand. So you're getting it like that, and then they give you percentage out of your ticket money, but then I had sponsorships growing out of my years. Everyone wanted to sponsor me. So... We was just like we did, as I, as I said earlier. We all thought we had a set of massive balls between our legs, and when you find out you haven't, it, it, it hurts. I could imagine your lifestyle changed a lot from getting before the fifteen million pound contract to signing it. Did you start doing some kind of like lifestyle stuff, yeah. or did you stay in the gym, stay focused? No, it was, just, it was just all we did was just train. And obviously, I was a big ticket seller anyway. I'm like, I'm, I'm quite. Uh, like uh, a local celebrity, yeah, you have got like yeah, a lot of yeah, people yeah. from your area and stuff. Yeah, yeah just yeah, I knew. Yeah, we, we yeah, right. Uh, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Local celeb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a celeb. Not a celeb. <laughs> <laughs> no, no celeb. Though, but, um, just, uh, I'm just well, well, like, well known. known in that yeah, well known in that area, right in my area, and and in the boxing industry, and um, yeah, it was just it was mad, it was crazy, and obviously that night when we we sold we sold Causebook Leisure Centre out, and obviously it, right Barry. Be watching it, hearing this anyway. So but Barry knew Barry see pan pan notes straight away, and then obviously TV the TV were like, "Who the hell is this kid?" Uh, I, I remember Adam Smith, the main man at boxing for Sky Sports. He just said he went. It's been a long time since I've seen something like that in a pro debut. I mean, you've got a bright future in front of you. Then on the I get a phone call on the, on the Friday, like that fight was on a Thursday. And he went, so on a Friday, we got, he went, can you be in my office uh, Monday morning at Brentwood, at Matchroom's head, headquarters? And then and that's when he, he went, here's, um, here's a contract, £15 million pound over five years. I nearly wet myself. <laughs> this is a graduate show, I didn't know what to do. Started stuttering. My, I looked at my trainer and my manager, and you could just see he, he had the biggest grin. And obviously everyone's, we've all, we're, look, we're just all thinking pan notes. Yeah, it's all paying off. It, all the hard work is paying off. And then, yeah. Then so what, what, um, what sort of typically, if, if you're going to, w- when someone gets offered a contract in that same position, but maybe obviously doesn't have the same, uh, or they don't see the, quite the same potential. So typically a standard boxer that comes in to the industry, what kind of value contract would that usually be? Like I'm just trying to judge... What? Well, remember this. I, it's mainly the ones that go to the Olympics, like Anthony Joshua, like the Darren Barkers of the world, and right. But I never went to the Olympics. I missed out in the qualifiers. I got beat in the qualifiers. So, um, so then, for me to go and sign a, that my first fight, even to me, I'll give you a thousand pound. 
It's all I've got. Fast Remember, I've got to pay to my trainer out of that. My uh, trainer, the cutsman. Uh, then you got to pay tax out of it. You, <coughs> fight, you fight for peanuts on that first, in my first fight. And then, but the second fight, and the, uh, it was just, like my, it just opened doors <coughs> for me that I genuinely never thought it was going to open. And um, But I knew it was going to open, if that makes sense. I knew uh, in my ability, I know how good I am. And um, it, yeah, it just, it was a bit surreal. But then you realise the people around you and then you get other boxers, they look at you and think, oh, look at you. Yeah, oh, look at him. Look, think he's. You get the hate, the hate come along with it. Yeah. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, of course. Where you get, and m- most of that hate is from the people that are really close to you. The ones that I thought didn't like me, but like, they were so happy for me mm. and couldn't back me enough. And I was like, but the ones that were close to me, like, I mean, proper close, were slowly stabbing me in the back, taking money away from me. Wow. And it was like your friends you kind of grew up with and your close family that, that you were getting the most Friends, family. Um, so they all saw you as a pound note then, pretty much. They all thought, like, he's got 15 mig. Because, like, in, in they, my they, head, they you think, think... They think, sorry, they think straight away, they think he's... Got all this money. Yeah, because that's what we were talking about earlier. Was like, how does a fifteen million pound contract work? You were saying, do you just get contract signed, bang, fifteen mil? Like, no, it has to work over that time. Yeah, yeah. but a lot of people probably thought that. I'll be here with you boys right now. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) 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 Or we'd be doing it on a live stream (laughs) (laughs) while I'm on the beach somewhere. (laughs) In my mind, I thought it might be an instalment thing. Like, you get five million up front, then the ten over the five years. No, no, no. Basically, they went like, first of all, they was gonna going to give us a house and the cars and but then because I never had the Olympics um, pedigree behind me like James DeGal and he, he said right we'll give you this contract first and, um, but still for someone from I was a fat boy from the East End uh, I'm grabbing that with both hands of course and um, yeah it was, it was, um, how did you actually deal with all that all the people trying to basically get something you know out of you as, uh, me and my dad have got a, me and my dad are very very uh, similar, and um, I just wish I listened to him a bit more because I left school at a young age. I want to work for him, so he's always telling me do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that. And and when I've come out, I'm like yeah, telling me what to do anymore. <laughs> I'm telling and you, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah and obviously, my old man's been there. The old man's been there, done yeah. more to see you. And all along, when my old man was saying things were happening. I was like, no, 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 it ain't happening, it ain't happening. It's, um, all along, my dad was right. So, um, yeah. What well, what was happening? What was going on to do with, obviously, yeah. that contract? Yeah, the contract. Put, put it this way. My, my arsehole was like that. It's now like that. <laughs> 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 I was getting shafted. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was a... <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you end up seeing much of that money out of the yeah, 15 million? Or? We, 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 we see, like, we see, we see, we see some bits... But it's um, but as I said, you'll see you'll see majority of everything in the documentary, and hopefully the autobiography when it all comes out mm. by the end of this year, hopefully. So on in the documentary, what um, go into a little bit of detail on that? What's what's the whole uh, story about there? Well, it's called Who George because um, basically me signing the contract with Barry, I had. Uh, I had all this. I had, I was the biggest prospect going at that time, like, and no one heard of me before. Even though I was a big ticket seller in the boxing world, but in the boxing industry, everyone knows who I am. But walking down the street, not a lot of people know who I am. Like, if, if I was walking down the road and Anthony Joshua was walking down the road, everyone I know who Anthony Joshua is. Not, not of them wouldn't know who I was. So, um, that's where we had to change the dynamic. Uh, change things a bit so my name got a bit more out of there and, and that's why we moved to Vegas with the Mayweathers because the Mayweather name once again was selling it more than my name um, yeah so and it, when yeah. did you move out to, to Vegas? That was, that, we moved out there well, that was 2019 that was when we, we moved out there um, mad what was going on there? just how did you get in touch with the Mayweathers with Barry? Well, no I've, I've known no I've known I've known Jeff Jeff Mayweather the uncle he was my trainer and he still will be he's still we're going to still be doing bits but he uh, I introduced uh, I had he all the time I was saying look I'm going to come out and see you I'm going to come out and see you 
And he was like, George, just stop talking about it. And then obviously we met this la- lady through and a mutual friend of ours. We met, I met a lady through alongside him. She was like, look, I can get you involved in... And obviously most people have seen the, the film on Netflix now. Get you involved in a part of this, the Bitcoin industry. And um, everyone was just earning silly money. Silly money. He's paying for my lifestyle out in there. And then I got the... Then we get a phone call. I get a phone call off the, off the lady. Sorry, I can't say names. Yeah. 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 I, wanna, I don't even want to call her a lady. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so we'll get a call. And she was like, oh, can you give me Barry Ernst's number? And um, I want... I want him to invest in with us in Bitcoin for the stuff in Saudi Arabia. So when the Anthony Joshua fight happened, she was like, oh, this is all because of me. Don't worry, I'm going to look after you. What a load of rubbish. I mean, look, absolute fool. They all just earned millions of pounds and then shafted me at the end of it. And, um, And that's what... And that's what, um, listen, let me tell you something. My life is a real life Rocky story. That is for sure. <laughs> yeah. Real life Rocky story. So we're, we're, we're still going. We'll come back bigger, better and stronger. So for anyone that hasn't watched that Bitcoin yet on Netflix. Yeah. So what, what was actually happening? So they got you involved. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I, I, I'm the only bit that's been brought into it is obviously the Mayweather name. Yeah. Because so, yeah, that's on, that's obviously on the documentary, isn't it? Yeah. So like they got yeah. him to promo. Yeah, they, it was all just a scam yeah, to do with a coin, course, course, and they it? got yeah. they paid Mayweather, then, DJ Khaled, all yeah, that. Yeah, DJ promo. Khaled, yeah, he got yeah. as well, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were, and they was like, oh, if you connect us with these people, that, 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 and like you're the middleman, and you sit there, and it looks like it's you playing everyone. So you was connecting. The was, dots so together. I'm the, I'm the man that connecting everyone. Who was paying you though? The crypto, the crypto coin. The, the project they were paying the, the project yeah um, well, he's dead now Christopher James Pomfret he was the man that was and he had everyone off leading off of him doing his work well. and um, this was like silly silly money oh yeah it's on the do- yeah on the documentary it's fucking mad, millions it? I think they yeah. said Floyd Mayweather yeah. got paid what, I think it's a million two hundred grand but then I, I think it was a million in the coin which yeah. is obviously yeah. worth nothing he had to pay it all back didn't he Supposedly, oh, did. yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And According to the documentary, yeah. Wow. And fines on top of it. <laughs> Listen, it. when when that person asked me to ask Barry to invest twenty five million into Saint, and uh, please give me his phone number, it was so embarrassing making that phone call. At the time, though, was you did you did you feel like that, or did no, you? I, at the time, I did. Yeah, I did because in my head, I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'm living this life, luxury lifestyle in in Vegas. And, and I'm slowly getting my name out there. Like the Americans, if you get your name out in America, then you know you're half cracked it. Yeah, 100%. And like, I'll tell you a story after this in a minute, which is quite funny. But yeah, w- when I was getting my name out there and everything was going so, so good. And then it all just come to a stop just, just like that. And it was mad. It was just like in America, they don't mess about. They just threw a note under at my door saying, we've booked your flights. <laughs> Piss off home. No way. Yeah, and it... I was just like, what? Your flights have been booked. Yeah, you got your sports visa don't allow you to stay here no more. COVID hit, that, like that. Around that same I, time. I, I, mess- <laughs> I messaged my mum saying, mum, what's this about COVID? And my mum went... George, that was in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, apparently there's COVID, it's COVID in America. No one even knew about it in the UK. No one. We landed back in September. Within a month, everything was locked down because of COVID. It was mad. It was, just mad. It was mad. And it was just, uh, you, I said, you couldn't write this in a book. You generally could not write it in a book. I mean, it's just, it was just crazy. It was mad. It was crazy. What did Barry say when you asked him to? Well, he said, "Oh, there's an investment said, opportunity there." He said, "Do me a favour." I went, "Don't give him my number." He went, "Here's my email." Give him my email, and he went, and then I talked to her from there. Did they invest? Did he invest any money? 
Um, I, I genuinely don't know, mate. We can cut that out. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I genuinely, I genuinely, I, no, I genuinely, I genuinely don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, yeah. A lot of people would have seen the the, the yeah. program and let's say but understand yeah. like how. Oh, do you know what? My phone went mental after. That. I didn't even know it was. It went. I didn't even know it was because my documentary was meant to be coming out way before that, doc, that documentary. Was it? Yeah. I mean, everyone and they was all taking a percentage of that as well because of your documentary. Yeah. Because of the bit, and it was going back oh, into the Bitcoin. Wow. So the Bitcoin would have took a, a part of my documentary, and they would have took a part of my um, autobiography. Okay, and what, the, the, the main people that started that that crypto, What's yeah, the crypto so, again, yeah. Centra, Centra, that's yeah. it, yeah. Centra, Centra, Bitcoin. Centra, Bitcoin, and it just and it, it weren't just it was loads of others, mate. It was and it was all leading off a of base. It was all leading off a of Bitcoin. Yeah, man. But and then when obviously when I started talking about it, saying you actually like screwed me over here. You, sorry, I swear you fucked me over here. Um, then it got a bit. Complicated, if that makes sense. Yeah. Everyone was like, "Now, because now I'm going to spill the beans." I because it's, it's getting made it made out that the reason I come back from uh, America is because I fucked up. What people thinking you was part of the scam or no, scam no, people? Not just that as well, that as well, but they're also thinking that uh, Georgie ain't been doing what he's been told to do out there. He's they've sent him back, and it was not like. And then I see the lady put something over social media. And there are people commenting on it. Oh yeah, I can't believe it. George, uh, George's done this and done that. And I was sitting there thinking, hold up, let's slow down. That ain't even what happened. I mean, then I got part of the other. I put something up on social media, and then people that were invested into that, were like George, so none of our money don't get taken. Please just take that article down because we all want to get our money still. So I was like, oh, if it's stopping us from getting our money, I'll take it down then. So I, I, I took it down. Where's the money? No one, no one's, no one's give us no money, have they? Uh, yeah. So I've, I'm telling everyone what's going on. Yeah. And because I took it down, I yeah, George is just a talker. And that's what it was made out to be. And um, yeah, it was, it was just a, uh, yeah, it was um, yeah. What was it like day to day being in the camp with? Like, was you with obviously? Yeah, like, with, with the Mayweather. Was, was, was Floyd and? Floyd pops Floyd in Jr. and out. There. He pops in and out, but yeah, no disrespect. I'm I'm not a like Jeff Jeff Mayweather. Yeah, he's fantastic. But Mayweather, he's got his entourage that it's and it's silly. Like, I find that embarrassing. Like the TMT, um, isn't it? Is it TMT? Is it TMT? It's the money, the, the, money, the, the money, money team. team. Yeah, the money yeah. Team. It's just it's yeah. just a, it's just a marketing thing, though, isn't yeah, it? Because obviously in the in the boxing, he, that's what he's, he's got. Like six Rolls Royces, they drive everywhere with like sixty. Like they've got ten people in each car. It's silly. Why do you say like, you don't need that? No, why do you know? Yeah. If you're respected, right? Like Mike Tyson's respected, you wouldn't need to do, you wouldn't need to have an entourage. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's all, it's all for camera, it's all for show. I mean, but... That's the market, that is the market. That is the market. That is the market, and that's, exactly yeah. That, and that's why they call him the money team. Like, you, which you can't knock him. He, it's fantastic what he does. In the sense of, like... Business. Just that. Yeah. Just that, just that. Um, I think with Floyd, he, uh, he's never had a manager as well, right? He's always negotiated his own deals. Is that what kind of led to his wealth? He didn't have to cut a it, It's not that he ain't, got, he, he ain't got a manager, but he has got a manager. So he's... I um, can't remember his name now. So he's got a man, an elderly fella, that's always with him. and um, But he does, everything goes for him. Everything. Floyd ain't very clever. Believe me. How yeah, I training see that. that? With well, but training wise, the man's a genius, and it's hard work, dedication. Don't matter how good you are. I mean, I am world class as an athlete, but I never trained like an, uh, I never trained like top boys. I just thought, don't worry, because I love a row, and I love the fighting. This just turn up. Yeah, I mean, but after three, four rounds, if I ain't knocked you out, what sting coming at me ass? <laughs> I mean, it's, and it's a difference where world 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 class fighters. I'm not world class fighters, but they're world class in that they never missed a day in the gym. Where disciplined. I missed yeah. I missed a couple of days and I was in McDonald's. You know, <laughs> KFC or Chinese, you know, I was getting a whip out the next yeah, day yeah, though. Yeah. yeah. So I was 
I was always being the, uh, I was gifted. But I was always being the, I was always being the mate, if that makes sense. Mm. Like, if you never had the money to pay your rent, don't worry, I'll pay it for you. Um, and then you ask them, oh, that money I lent you, can you lend it back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give it to you next week. I, I've got no money on me now. I mean, it's, it's, it's just the same same old, I was that mate. I was a mate that lent, lent everyone everything. But at the end of the month, I'm like, now I need my money back. Can you help me, can you help me out? Uh, yeah. I was doing some research prior to coming through and I think it was in a podcast you'd done with someone else. You were telling a story about how you used to buy so many people drinks in a pub that you were doing like seven, eight grand a month in the pub and the, the pub owner actually said, look, I'm, I'm not letting yeah. you spend any more money yeah. because they're taking this out. Yeah. Yeah. Did you subliminally or subconsciously know that at the time or, or was it just in, a case in, of... In a way, I was going through depression at the time. I, obviously, I, my manager took me for that money, my... Mother of my two older kids, she went, and like I found friendship in the bottle of JD and Coke. I was doing a JD and bottle of Coke every night. Do you know what I mean? And I said, I'm not very tall, so being as tall as you are, I was wide, when I could look. <laughs> so yeah, I was, and I was just drinking. I was just, but I was in, the, and the lady in the pub, she was such a lovely lady. Her name was Michelle. And um, she she just pulled me to one side. She went, George, she went, you're such a lovely fella. She went, but I'm not going to let you keep doing this. I was like, what? I thought I'd done something wrong. She was like, you're buying everyone drinks all the time. She went, no one wants to buy you a drink back. She went, just stop it. She went, like, like the bill coming like seven, 800 quid every month. And she said, she went, and you're what, you, you pay it. And no one else wants to chip in. And she went, you're paying for everyone else to have a good time. I'm not doing it no more. She went, you want to drink for yourself? She went, I'm only going to serve you to buy a drink for yourself. And she was lovely for that. She was, yeah. Fair enough looking out for you. Because yeah, yeah, no, you I, can't I, see I, it, can I you, really? Her, I yeah. respect that, yeah. So was you still boxing at the time? Was you, I was, was still going through that I, Yeah, I was still boxing. I was doing um, I was doing the unlicensed then. So, um, yeah, I was doing the uh, the unlicensed where there's another brutal. Right, just like underground. And their their organisation is fantastic, though. Yeah, they, they looked after me on there as well. I was only bundles of money on there. Just, yeah. Um, the stories on there as well, so good, some, some good stories. But that, how, how long did you do that for? I did, wh- that for a cu- I did that for a couple of years. I had 10 fights on there. 10, 10 fights, 10, 10 wins. And um, I won the IBA world title on there. It was, yeah, it was... Um, were these televised? Uh, so, uh, yeah, they were televised, yeah, by uh, <coughs> Steve Hunsworth. But for Bravo and... Bravo, I remember Bravo, Bravo yeah, 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 yeah. Things like that, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. with your career then, so about 2021 is when you first got into boxing, got signed by Barry, Barry Hearn, yeah. got the £15 million pound deal, and then where did your career go from next? We've jumped from there to the yeah, Mayweather, yeah, yeah, we've, yeah, yeah, jumped, we've yeah, missed we've that jumped, 20 yeah, we years, jumped, yeah. so no, where's, where's the, where's the uh, timeline? So where do we go from the signing the, uh, so signing the deal? Signing the deal... Everything was going cushy. I was getting, I was getting X, Y, Z every month. Um, like we were, just, we were just, we were just living a comfortable, nice life. But then my my old man noticed things were going missing. And who has access to this stuff? Though it's your, it's surely yeah. yours. Now. Yeah, no, he's my, he's my manager and he's my trainer. Yeah, and I, I loved, I loved this man like he was my own dad. Yeah, and um, that's no disrespect to my own dad because. I, I spent every day with this man from the age of thirteen to to the program to to we to we were um, living the life as what we wanted. Yeah, and um, it's crazy. It was mad, absolute mad. And um, yeah, I had all, we had everything going for us, and I didn't never thought it was ever going to end. And uh, when I found out that he was pocketing everything I had to leave him then it was like I, I got to the gym one day and I it was a table like this and um, I'm sitting here he's sitting there and I was just like what's been going on I went, where was your where was your loyalty to me when I was showing my loyalty when everyone was telling me to leave you and he went listen here son 
if you want loyalty, go and buy yourself a fucking dog. I just stood there. What? Wow, yeah. If you want loyalty, go and buy yourself a fucking dog. What a prick. So I stood there, all, and I could... I stood there, and I just went... Bang, and smashed his table, and it's split in half. And I, I was like, that's it now. I'm like, we're done. I now know I ain't getting nothing back at this. Like, I, I've been... But you put something over social media, oh, I'll talk, oh, yeah, 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 this, yeah. Like, you get the ones that go, yeah, back in you, and then you get the ones that go, oh, I'm glad it's, <coughs> I'm glad, I'm glad it's happened to you. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean, it's like... How did, you, how did you find out from just checking accounts? Or? Yeah, it was just... <coughs> oh, I, said, I have to watch what I say, because I wanted to come out in a documentary more than... But, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was just um, things weren't like I was getting money sent to me from Barry, and um, and he, I thought, oh, he must have sent me too much money. No, he never sent me too much money. That that's the money I've been getting from Day Dot, and I'm like, I've been fucked over here. Sorry to keep swearing. Sorry, I've been screwed over here by. Someone I, I genuinely did did love. I loved him like my own dad. And then when we started looking into the books more, look at. Do you know what? You know when, as silly as this may sound, you know when something's under your nose, you don't look. You're you're so busy looking at the back here, thinking checking all the paperwork at the back here, thinking I don't want to miss it. And the one that's under your nose, right there, right there, all the time it was right there. You're quite. You're thinking so. You're not. You're not. You're not a businessman, you know, greatest respect. Yeah, no, no, you're not totally, you're not a businessman. Yeah. That's yeah. why you have these people and yeah. people that can manage. You're totally. a sportsman, you're an athlete, and your job is to concentrate on boxing and winning fights and training. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Totally. So that's probably where a lot of your focus yeah. was. Well all my trust was I did when my I didn't want to bring my dad involved into it. I didn't want to bring my family involved in it, so I thought I'll keep it professional. Everything's gonna be professional. Was it? Yeah. Well, it's professional in his part. Yeah. His bank account was going up and up and up, and mine was going down, down, down. Yeah. So it was just it was just hard. And, and then how long into your career was that? God, the first two years. What was it? Oh fucking hell! So what happened the next? Obviously, it was a five year contract. When you done the signed so, paperwork, it was in his name. So what happened once you found out? So then did the money start coming back to you, or did he still pocket? For I, the next I, I, so I I phoned Barry and I messaged Barry and said, but "Can I call? I call you at twelve and we'll have a chat, please." We went, no problem, son. <laughs> So I called him at 12 and I was like, listen, I, I, went, I, want, I need to get all my money back. I want to get everything back out of him. And he was like, George, I can't be a part of it. He went, like, the biggest thing I can, he went, George, he went, you can, he went, take this as a learning curve. He went, what you're going to get in the next part it's going to be so much more than what you've got, what you've lost. I mean, so take it, wipe your mouth with it, and move on. So that's when I went with Tony Tony Sims, and um, so I had to wipe my mouth. I was sitting there thinking, I've been done over, and, and they're laughing at me in my head. You know, and that's when obviously the mother of my my two older kids, obviously, I ended up getting done for common assault there, and she come around my house with a dictaphone on, just right. I don't know what she tried to do. I mean, but where she just think you have money, like she's looking at you as like a no, no, she cash cow. No, no, she, um, she won't, she won't, she won't that way inclined. I don't think. I don't think. Anyway. Yeah. But I, I don't, I don't know anymore. Do you know mate? Yeah. It was just, it's such, it was, it was such an hard, hard time that I thought, whatever corner I'm turning on, I got someone sticking something up my ass and shafting me. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, I just thought I was getting shafted. If it, so I thought everyone, in the end, they even, like, I hated every woman in my life then. So I thought they're all, they're all trying to, like, my mum, sister, the mother of my kids, my nan, aunties, I just, piss off, who are you, who are you talking to me? Like, and then the men in my life as well, I was like, where were you trying to, you were all there happy when I had money, where were you there trying to, and they're like, we're trying to help you, George, but you're pushing us to the side. I'm like, what am I, what's going to happen here? I mean, it was, it was just a hard time. It wasn't just a hard time for me. 
even though I was the one being put through it, it was a hard time for my family. Like, it was, yeah, it was just a, it was a mad, 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 mad time. And then, like, we're jumping back, now. got me trying to get my licence back with the board, and I failed a brain scan. So I'm like, I've just spunked all this money getting my medical done. How do you, how do you fail a brain scan? Well, there, was, there, there was a change in my brain scan. Right. So he said, if my brain was like that last year, and now it's like this. It was just, and they went, we can't let you... Um, can't let you uh, have your license back. We want you to go and get a specialist. Uh, so I went to see a specialist. Done it. Done it. All costing us thousands and thousands of pounds. Done it. Passed it. So then I sent it back to him, and then because I kept calling him and call, I was calling him. You just eager I, to get it back. Yeah, of course. I was a bit yeah. like a stalker to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was calling him, calling him, and call, like, and he was like, when I was calling the office, oh, he's not here. He's not here. He's not here. He's not here. So I just finally got hold of him, and um. And his words were to me, Mr. Hillyard, you don't call me, when I'll call you when there's, there's news. I'll call you. So don't, you don't call me, I'll call you. So I went, do you know what? When I see you next, I'm going to smash you shot in the face. And I, uh, this, but I was, look, I was young, I was naive. And he said to me, as long as I'm in charge of the British Boxing Board of Control, you are never, ever going to have your licence again. And that man has kept to his word since 2011. Fucking hell. Is he so, still in charge now then? Yeah. So, but I promise, I don't know if I can say it, but when I do see him, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to <laughs> do it. Up to you, I yeah. can't look like a talker. <laughs> I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> yeah, never seen it. That's like 13 yeah, years, no, 13 years well, ago. Well, yeah, but when he does see me, you see him sharp off. And That's why you ain't seen him. He's yeah. seen you. Oh, yeah, he's you seen haven't seen him. him. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, he's darted every time. Yeah, he's darted every so time. So how does that work if you can't get a licence so through I, the British boxing? So that's why when I got the, I went and got BBO, it's British and Ireland Boxing Association. Right. Then I got the Maltese licence. Then I went to Vegas. But every time I booked a fight in, with the, to fight, he would put a stop to it. So he, he would then say to whoever I was fighting, if you fight George Yard, you won't be able to fight on a British Boxing Board of Control show anymore. Why do you want to fuck you so bad? Because of that, what I said to him. Did so, you try and approach him and just say, look, mate, I've seen you at the moment, I'm sorry? Or? Listen, as I said, I was young, naive at the time. I was just so eager, and I was so eager to please everyone at the time. Yeah. I mean, I was just a young kid that had a load of money that should never have had a load of money because it weren't invested, it weren't looked after properly. It was just spunking on everyone else, and yeah, it's just and I wanted to say to him, just listen, just give me this opportunity, please, like. And then, but me trying to get close to him because he always thought I was going to knock him out. And I still think he like he knows. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know something similar, a completely different story. But Conor Ben got his license taken away yeah. last year because he was fighting Eubank Junior. Right? Yes. Failing a drug test, but yes. he what's he doing now? Because he's fighting he's in, in Saudi now, isn't he? You need a different license. In a, yeah, he's, yeah. So he's even got his American license. Well, obviously he trains with Tony Sims, and Tony Sims. That's who I went with. Right, right. Okay. So Tony Sims. After I split with my trainer, I went with Tony Sims. What a trainer! What a fantastic man! And like, so who else has he trained then? Is he saying he does oh, kind of? He, he trained Darren Barker, and Darren Barker is the best I've been in the ring with. Like, we never box each other, spar. but we, we spar. Yeah, sparring. We, we, he was just. He's IBF world champion. He was, yeah, he was, um, yeah, he was mustard. But yeah, he had, it was me, um, Darren Barker, um, Lee Purdy, the, the Cabman brothers. He had, he had us all over there. So I turned over from there, I went to Hennessy Sports and ITV. And um, yeah, it just, it, I, I weren't, I weren't in love with the game then. Like, and Tony put so much money my way that I, in my head, this is how my head went in the end, in my head I was like, he's giving me all this money, putting it like, this is without fight money. He's getting people, his mates to sponsor me and put all this money my way. I'm like, he must be having me over. He won't have me over at all. And he's then, just scarred, like trauma yeah, scarred yeah. from previous. But then, and then he said to me, George, he pulled me in the changing room and he said, listen, Whatever we in our relationship in this gym, I mean, just I don't care whatever you do, I mean, just don't ever lie to me. Right? Mate, I lied to him 
every day I said, oh, I can't come in today, mate. He's like, what, what's the matter? I'm like, I've got to have my wisdom tooth out. I'm the only geezer that's had about 25 wisdom teeth. <laughs> <laughs> it grow back quick. And I've got to have it like that. So, so uh, every, every day, every week, it was the same excuse. He knew I was bullshitting and lying. And he just said, in the end, he just said, George, listen, you're a lovely boy. He, listen, I can't, can't keep having this, mate. He said, uh, like, basically, what happened in my previous, he's like, kind of told me, like, you're scarred. And then wish me the best for the future, and um, and that's it. And we left on a on a handshake. Still um, speak to him now? Yeah, oh, listen. If I see him, I speak to him. Yeah, I've got no point. He's, he's, listen, the best trainer in the country. Yeah. Um, brilliant man, fantastic man, uh, fantastic family. What he did to me at the time put a lot of money in my way, which I could never ever fought him for. And um, yeah. It sounds like you've been through trauma especially with being fucked over by that first guy so did you ever do anything to try and deal with that like any counseling or no, no never so how, how what was your kind of solution um i just thought do you know what i'm just gonna have to get over it but obviously when i split split with my my ex-partner and got with my my wife to be um just that grounded me so much it's just like this is where i want to be she made me she made me at peace she made everything at ease, like, she, to be honest with you, she does everything, like, does everything for me. I ain't got to do, the only thing I have to do is write my own ass. And, um, <laughs> and that's the God's only truth. That is the God's only truth. She does everything. So um, all I have to do is just concentrate on training and going to work. That's, that's it. But she, she's been the rock of, of everything. Yeah, amazing. It's so true when you find the right woman. Yeah, it's cliche, totally. Right? But it really, it makes things so much easier. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, whereas if you're with someone that's toxic, especially if you, you've got a busy life, mm. things come crashing down. I've yeah. experienced that myself yeah. as well. Yeah, um, totally, mate. Yeah, well said. Yeah, for sure. So from obviously Tony Sims exiting with you, what, where where did you go from there? Like what was the next well, that's, steps? Well, that's when um, I got into the prize fighter. And after the prize fighter, I boxed, um, oh, Kieran Kieran Gray from where the and it was eliminator for the for the British title, so I, I beat him and then I had to have my medical uh, my, we do my medical for the year, so uh, when I had it all done, and then, um, that's when they said there's a change in your brain scan, we're not going to let you fight for the eliminator. I stood there, uh, what do you mean? I mean we want you to go and see a specialist. We go, so it cost us thousands of pounds, as I said seeing all these specialists, going to Harley Street. And I was like, I could just go to my own doctors and do it. But no, you had to go to Harley Street, you had to do it. All right. So we, we went there, done it all, and um, passed it all. So when I, that's when I said, I tried to get my license back to him, but because I said that comment, like a young foolish boy that I was at the time, um, it's dented me for the, for the future. Do you regret that comment? Yeah, I, I well, yeah, I do. I do. I do regret it. Yeah, but it's just it's, look. It's nothing. It won't. I'm never going to do it. It's just a, it's like, a moment of anger. Yeah, it's, it's just a. Yeah, it was just a, a moment type of thing. Yeah, yeah. He at the moment, and um, yeah, it's just like you, you like to think that he was old enough and like. To really Celine, like, calm down. He's yeah, dealing with. He's dealing with like boxers yeah, who yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. You'd feel like I mean. Yeah, just... You'd have a bit thicker skin in it yeah. after dealing but, with fighters. What I don't realise is what... After... When I got... When I went with the British and Ireland Boxing Association, Bieber, and then I went to America, every time I was going to have a fight, they would put a stop to it. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was just crazy. Like, whatever I was going to do, they were going to... This is hindered, and that is yeah. the only reason I, I half went over to the to the bare knuckle, bare knuckle scene. And then Jim and Joe at BKB, they fantastically find everything brilliant. So with the bare knuckle stuff, I mean, I was always under the impression that that was illegal. No, it's, no obviously, obviously, it's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it, that's what a lot of people. That's, do. Yeah, yeah. But when you go to the shows, they are they are brilliant. Are they? Yeah, like people think they all think underground um, thugs, and it, like, it's not. No, it's just a misconception. Yeah, like. but a lot of like more pros now are turning over to bare knuckle. Yeah, why is that? Um, like adrenaline or uh, it's just it's just you get looked after better and um, financially or just overall um, yes and no 
Yes or no? I, say, I can't. I, I'll just say yes or no for that at the moment. Yeah. But um, yeah. But how you like? I said the fights don't last that long because it's that brutal. Yeah. Right. In brutal in the sense of you get cut and the cuts are that bad that they, it has to get stopped. Like my last fight, my face. I genuinely, my face looked like I've been hit by. A, I went viral, did that because I, yeah, I, I saw that before yeah. we got connected. Yeah, yeah, I'd that already, just, I'd already that seen was, that. I yeah. actually went viral. Yeah, yeah mate, yeah. on your Instagram. So that was I, I, UFC I, fight. Yeah, I watched a couple of videos, mate. It looks like you can have a fucking scrap. Right? <laughs> no shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I have to ask you this question: Is like, do you get scared of that? Is that scary? Before you yeah. get in the ring, right? Like, this going through your mind. This may sound like, and people think you're you don't know like you. You're silly, but I'm far from silly, right? All it is is the best place for me to be is in the ring, right? Because you don't want, well, I think you want me, right? I feel like I'm nearly 40, but I like to be active. I like to be, you don't want me fighting in the street. I'm not, not that I'm going to be fighting, I don't, you know what I mean? But it's better to fight, get my anger out and do the same in the, in the ring yeah. than to be doing it in the street or going out getting drunk and, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, but it's, listen, I just, I, I love it. I'm, and by the way, I'm not a thug. I'm, I'm a gentleman, just like you, you, you fellas here. Um, I don't go out in the street fighting. Right? I just love the sport. I just I just love the sport. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's, uh, yeah, hopefully you boys will be there next week. So, yeah. Oh man, I love that. Yeah, I'm up for I'm it. I'm up for skiing. I'll see, it's uh, it's the day I go away. You have to stream it then, oh, Joe. You're, you're, you're doing something pussy. <laughs> 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 and just for the listeners, what what venue are you fighting? Uh, the O2 the Arena, uh, the Indigo O2 Arena. Wicked. So, so uh, yeah, it's, um, I'm pretty sure it's a sold out event, but um, we'll look on look on the uh, thing later. But I'm pretty sure it's sold out. But it's a uh, yeah, limited. So. The winner of this fight, he's the champion already anyway, so the winner of this fight get his, uh, moves on to bigger and better things. Is this just a British thing mainly, or is it, well, no, is it world worldwide? I know if it's a uh, Romanian guy you're Yeah, I'm fighting, no, it's worldwide. Really? Yeah, so it's, it's massive in America. Uh, we had, uh, I meant to... Remember Kim, Kimbo Slice? Yes. Yeah, 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 he was yeah, a yeah. fucking, yeah, he was yeah, the yeah, guy, yeah. wasn't he? He was the original, but yeah. there's like old videos of him, you, like in the backyard. See, when it? you say he was the original, he wasn't. No, from what I from yeah. what I remember, so the yeah. original go uh, it goes way way goes. Back. Of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. remember people. It's the only reason I say that is on YouTube. Yeah, do yeah. you know what I mean. So everything else was not on YouTube. Yeah. So my like gloves were only invented to protect your hands. Did you like you, you smash your hands up in this game? Yeah. I mean, when, like hitting your top of your head, you're ruthless. Break your hands. I mean, that's and that's, that's the only reason solid. gloves were invented. Yeah. Just to protect hands. I mean, but. BKB is actually safer than professional boxing. Why? Because either you get cut uh, and you get stopped, or you get knocked out. And it's better to get knocked out than to keep taking punches to your head yeah. constantly. <laughs> what percentage of the time do bare knuckle fights end in a knockout? Is it most of the time, would you say? Um, not, not really. It mainly gets stopped on cuts. Right. Yeah, because the cuts are ruthless. Right. And you know, fighting over a long period of time, so I know quite a lot of fighters, they have like damaged tissue because they've been hit so many times. It's, why, know, you, why are you looking at me like that? Leeds Queen, that was obviously a couple of, couple of battle wounds. Yeah, oh, yeah. Where, where you get opened up quicker. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah like, so my, like, I'll show you the pictures after, but my last fight, God, it was, well, I had one down here, one across up there. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just, listen, it's a part of the. I mean, I ain't in no modelling competition, so... Gorgeous shoulders, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm still gorgeous shoulders, <laughs> even, even though I've got the scars. <laughs> <laughs> you were quick there. <laughs> yeah, no, but... Um, yeah, no, but it's... it's, 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 it's a lovely... It's a great sport. And, um, and it's... Like, with gloves on, like, you go to, like, a, a matchroom show or a Frank Warren show, they go, right, your corner... Like, everyone goes and sits over in... BKB, we all turn up at the way and we all sit together. Full grown, and I mean these men, and these are men. The talent means nothing in this. No matter how talented you are, these are men that can have have a row, right? are strong as an ox. And um, yeah, and we all sit there, and we all take the piss out of each other, having a laugh with each other, shaking hands. 
bash the shit out of each other and afterwards we're going to have a beer with each other. Nice. And that's what it's about. That's just classic. Right, yeah, yeah. Exactly that. That's yeah, what yeah. It, that's all, obviously, right now in the boxing world, you've got a lot of the misfit stuff and you've got John Fury throwing over tables and stuff like that's, that. What's your opinion it's, on that? Pers- I, I, it's, it is a good question. It's, it's bringing a different platform to the, to the sport, but it's slowly killing the sport as well because now it's thinking, right, no disrespect to you boys, yeah, you think, you know, fellas, uh, like, do you know what? Fuck, I'm not going to do that. Sorry, I, you know what, I've never boxed in my life, mate. Exactly. Yeah. So it's going from no, you're never boxing in your life. Going, do you know what? Because I'm quite, I've got quite a big following on social media. I'm going to go and I call someone out, and that's how it starts. Yeah. Prime example is when I was boxing on under Matchroom Headley Sport, um, Matchroom Sport, and Barry Barry Owens, I was getting interviewed, and I said uh, I offered someone out on, on Sky Sports <laughs> behind the camera. Come, Barry's going, oh, that's me. I'm like. <laughs> so I got finished the interview and he went right next time he went don't do that I was like what do you want me to do he went put it on social media he went I went why he went because everyone's got it right there handheld so he went, then everyone will turn into the watch it on TV yeah getting views yeah yeah yeah, yeah, mate. yeah. He's always you're a box side like you know, he's thinking about promoting and getting it done and there's me just thinking about having a fight. Yeah, that's it. And and you're, you're, you're concentrating on that. You're not yeah. concentrating on like, where do the that. money's Put it from. on social media. And, then, and when you do it on social media, you get all these... And this is where you have to be quite f- thick-skinned because you get people go, oh, you're a knob, you're this, you're that, and uh, you're trying to get a name off of this person. You're trying to, uh, and then people don't realise you're playing a game. But do you know, do you know what I mean? Like you're, yeah. you're trying to play the game with them. And you're getting abused for it. Yeah, and then, yeah. and then, as Barry says, it's tomorrow's shit paper. What are you worried about? Why, why, if you're worried about what people are saying about you, then you're in the wrong sport. So, do you know what? You have a point there. No press is bad press. Exactly that. I guess in boxing as well, sometimes it pays to be the villain, right? Because if people don't like do you, know you they'll buy a ticket to see you right. get weighed in, right? So you, you, vice versa. He's, he's proper helping me out here, telling me. <laughs> proper help. So, once again, Barry, we're sitting in, Barry, in, the, in the office, and Barry went to me, uh, Who are you? You've probably seen this in another thing. I was like, what do you mean, who am I? So I'm, I'm George, I'm the boxer. And that's where you're going wrong. He went, so I was like, what am I then? He went, this is, he went, you're a product. He went, now get out of my fucking office and go and sell yourself. <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, listen, most people don't like boxing. He went, Right now, he went, if you get beat tomorrow, it goes from 20,000 people supporting you to 10,000, just like that. Right? And he went, you can't be liked. What? You, can't. He went, you have to be loved or hated. It's like being in a panto. Mm. He went, if they hate you, they wanna, they're going to boo you and they want to, like Chris Eubank, they hated him. They want to see him get knocked out, right? Of course. So what they're doing, they're buying tickets to come and see him get beat. Ricky Atten, they loved him. Paying to watch him win. So if they like you, they go, oh, yeah, he's a nice fellow, him, yeah, forget about you. But if they hate you, they talk about you. If they love you, they talk about you. So, But if they like you, you don't get talked about. Probably one or the yeah. other. So yeah. you, you can't be in the middle. You have to be like a... Have a unique selling point. So what did you do after that? What route did you try and take? And how did you approach it? Did you take action on, on what he said, on his advice? You, you do, but then once again, it's like... If you're I not being yourself though, are you? That's no, the other no, thing. That's the you, thing. You're, 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 you're if I was in a room with 100 people and 99 went, Joe, what, Georgie's the absolute nuts. And one person went, I think it's a prick. I forget the 99 and I'll concentrate on the one. Yeah. yeah? I'm the same. Right? But then they're like, what? why? I'm like, yeah, but I want him to let me. But then you're putting all your energy into the wrong basket. Yeah. <laughs> and um yeah, so then, but you learn as you get older, you like, you sit there thinking, why am I even entertaining it? Like, just, I'm, all, all I am now, I'm just a man chasing a dream. I'm not here to, I'm not hurting no one, I'm just chasing a dream. And I'm going to chase it until I get it. What is until, that, what is the dream? What's the dream? So, be a world champion again. Is it genuinely world champion in the BKB or professional in the glove scene? I think that's, a, it's going to be over now. I say I'm, I'm stuck with BKB now. 
Yeah. That's, that's where I am. And how many fights away are you from your dream? It could be the next fight. Really? My next fight's all about, my next fight's about, it's got to be win. Win, win. Because my last fight, I didn't put a performance on. I got in there and, like, the week up, the week of the lead up to that fight, I mean, that fight was, what, eight weeks ago, and I had my tooth knocked out. And then my, my wife lost, we lost our baby. Our, our baby ended up getting taken, like, sent to Great Ormond Street for tests. So, oh, sorry um, to hear that. Yeah, but no, it's listen. It's it's life. It's just it's another part of the it's a part of the story that you know what I mean. So your focus was yeah, taken. No, no, yeah, but I'm not taking that that win away from that man. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not being. But it was just yeah. We w that week was just a. Uh, I had a way lot of people probably would have pulled out. You know, well, like, I I had everyone around me telling me to, to pull, pull out. out. Yeah, you know what I mean, and um, I said. Because of the, what happened in the last fight, I had to pull out because of my back. I was like, if I pull out of this fight, then they're going to work me again. That's going to be me over. I went, I'd rather just get in there and and just... Have a tear-up. And have a tear-up. Yeah. I went, I oh, know, if I connect, I'll knock him out. But I won't connect him that night. That's for one thing for sure. I was, I was throwing shots from fucking miles away. He went home, he could have gone home and had a cup of tea. China before he got back. <laughs> before it fucking landed. You know what I mean? When was that? That was uh, at the Indigo O2 in um, November. Aye. So, yeah. Couple, yeah. Next fight. So, if you win this fight, the next fight's hopefully for the it'll title. Be, hopefully, it'll be for some title, yeah. So, um, yeah. But it's all about putting bums on seats. Promo Remember, listen, not knocking the promoters because it's a business. But the promoters don't give a shit how good you are or how, who I am. Like, how many tickets can you sell? Yeah, that's can you sell yourself? So it's all about putting bums on the seats. You're probably one of the guys that could do that, though, right? Or as uh, a, in in that industry, in the bare knuckle as, fighting. No, but as a professional glove done, I, I was one of the biggest ticket sellers in. That's the, what in I'm the saying. Country. Yeah, so going to BKB. Yeah, a lot of people because I've got an older generation that follow me as well. They're like, George, just brutal, mate. I can't really. You know what I mean? like, well, so they don't want yeah. to, they just they don't, 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 don't want to come. Yeah, don't want to come to Wow. Uh, but the That's promoter, interesting. Yeah, it is. Because the promoter said to me, you went, George, you went, people that followed you in the pro game, professional, uh, gloved, won't follow you in the pro bare, bare, bare knuckle. I'm like, why? He said, it's, a lot of them, because it is brutal. It's brutal. It's fantastic, but it's brutal. And um, it's very true. He said, they won't, they won't like, they won't follow you over to this sport. How about your family? Do they come and watch the fights? Not, not all of them. No. Can't blame them though, right? No, no you can't blame them. Because it is, like, my mum and dad come to my my last one because I had the two, previous two I knocked I knocked out. So they was like, yeah, well, well yeah. So we're, um, they make sure you got so track record first. Yeah, so they, they come to the last one and then all the the, the, the build-up in that week, I had everyone telling went, me to pull You out. went through shit, yeah. Yeah, we went through, I mean, but I weren't going to pull out. I mean, I weren't going to, I mean... Um, and I just stood there I just let him Kept punching me It was weird It's a weird I was trying to feel The pain that my wife To be was feeling Wow Does that make sense? Yeah mate yeah, That's powerful was, yeah So I was like She was carrying it So I was like if she, Come on Keep hitting me And um, when the referee Tried to stop it At the end He was like oh, George he went I can't even just like, At one bit I run, I run at him he moved out of the way. I went, nearly went through the ropes. <laughs> but he's in, but it was never, uh, they were just flash knockdowns. And the referee was like, like everyone was like, this ain't you. Like, what's going on what's here? What's going on here? But I never told no one what, what was going Why? on. Didn't want to tell no one. It's no one's business. But, uh, yeah. But we live and we learn and we go again. Saturday. One fire away, that's, that's sick. That, that yeah. Potential. And that's, and that's the, I need that kind of pressure. It makes me perform better. What, what 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 are the titles you've won to date so far? Uh, I won the WBC Confederation World Title, the WBU International. The, I won the IBA and the Unlicensed uh, IBA World Title, and I won the British Masters over Tony Sims and um, under Hennessy Sports. Yeah, so um, that's some fucking good great battles. achievements. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah do you yeah. look back at that? Do you like appreciate that? Like you look yeah, back and go, yeah, like I've, I've yeah. achieved some good stuff. I, I could, yeah, but with me, I'm a, I want more. Yeah. Like, that's not enough for me. They're not. That's not. Like considering my talent and how good I am, uh, I should be WBC, WBA, IBF, 
I should be knocking on doors for all of them. I should have won the British and Commonwealth and European titles. But um, but it's my own fault that I messed about. It's a reason, though. You change your path, though, right? That's, yeah. what, that's what you're doing now. <laughs> and you've got you've got different dreams now. Yeah, di- totally different dreams. And um, yeah, so, but I will if I get the opportunity on this on this on this uh, circuit, I will I will be a world. Uh, when you win this title, right? Are you then I like gonna? That. I like that. When you win, not yeah, if. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the programming, yeah. man. Yeah. I believe you're gonna win it as well. You're gonna stop. Or are you going to keep carrying on to defend the I'll, title? I'll keep ca- Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll only carry on. I'm not silly. I, like, I'll, I'm 40 this year. So I won't be going on to... And you can't do exhibition boxing in this. Yeah. Because it is it's brutal. So I'll do it as far as my body will go. As soon as my body says, George, lock up, man, man. Put your slippers on. You know, yeah. I'll be putting my slippers on and... and, and Putting everything away, and I'll be helping the kids in of the next generation, bringing them through. Hundred percent. I'll be in training. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a good goal. I've, I've got a question, right? Just about boxing. I've always wondered this. Me and Luke spoke about this the other day. You know, so many boxers get caught for doping or like doing drugs. Yeah. That makes me think: Does everyone do it, and only sometimes people get caught, or is it the people who sometimes take a chance and do it they get caught straight away? Like, what's the background with that? Right, boxers don't take. There's no. There's no, no Listen, it's the odd ones you get, like Jarrell Miller. Yeah. I spent so much time. I lived with Jarrell Miller in New York at, when we were training out there. And um, <coughs> that man is super, super talented. Right? They call him the cheeseburger because he loves a cheeseburger. <laughs> so uh, he couldn't walk. Uh, they talk about me, but they, he couldn't walk past McDonald's. And get, <laughs> <that guy. laughs> so, but once again, he's, he's like, oh, if I just take something to let me lose a bit of weight, Make me look like um a bit toned. I, yeah, a bit yeah. toned. But majority of boxers ain't don't do it. Other them are scared to do it. Yeah. You know I mean. But you majority of boxers get tested anyway. So piss testing, hair testing, you, you, you get tested anyway. Mm. Even if you're for a title. Is it but, random testing as well? You don't know when it's gonna come. Yeah. So you might even if we're fighting for a title, you, you get a you get your drug tested anyway, right? When you get to the show you get tested anyway. But they may just do a random one and someone turns up at your door. Three o'clock in the morning. You know what I mean? Shit. Yeah. So most people don't do it. Nice. No, it's, well, it's, it's, the sport is a hard sport. I mean, most boxers know that. Why do you want to do that when you, you can end up taking someone's life in there? You know I mean, you don't, wanna, you, don't want that, you don't want that on your conscience anyway. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's that's good to know because I feel like you do sometimes see people with crazy genetics. Like Anthony Joshua's built like a fucking brick house. Right? He's been like that from he's been like that from back in the day. Yeah, I mean, do you remember hearing about him and his come up and stuff before oh yeah, he oh, was? Oh yeah, listen, on the scene. <coughs> I was just I just I just left in the England team, and do you know what? Well, I remember him walking in Crystal Palace at the time, and um, you know when you think, fucking who's, who's that old fella? He was so big. Yeah, he looked older than what he, and he's younger than me. Uh, and he generally looked like. <laughs> I mean, but what he's done for British boxing, huge, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. He he put it back on the map. You think Ricky Atten brought it back out after after the Bruno and uh, boxing went a bit dead. Then Ricky Atten brought it back out. Then Ricky Atten retired and it went a bit dead. Then obviously they was hoping that I was going to bring that out, and it never got to that stage. But then Anthony Joshua just blew it, blew it. Oh, he, oh, he just blew it. Out of all the birds loved him as well. That's fucking why as well. Like they were even watching it it's just true. to fucking see him. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's another fifty percent of yeah. crowds that he's drawing through. Yeah. I always find it interesting with, um, obviously, with something like this where you obviously don't like the word, but you kind of get straight into the limelight, become some somewhat a celebrity. Yeah. Um, when same with footballers or any athletes, really, you're just doing something you love, a sport you love, a yeah. talent that you've got. Yeah. See nowadays, people kind of choose. All right, I want to start becoming an influencer on Instagram. Yeah. They consciously become, or you start, you you go in Tower, you're made in Chelsea. Yeah. You're choosing to try and become that, a celebrity. But that is very that different is, to an athlete. Totally, mate. Totally. Like, but that's <coughs> social media. That social media has done that. Yeah. But when I first started boxing, we didn't even have that. Like. 
You still would, I guess, because you're papers. televised. If you're yeah. on Sky yeah, Sports yeah, and stuff like that. You never had Facebook. You never had Facebook. Everything all started going big. 2008, 2009. Mm. That's when it all started going... Like, I turned pro at 2005. Mm. So when the pros of today turn over, their social medias are... Just, yeah. Mad. Yeah. Like, yeah. it just... Like, but even when the promoters... How many followers you got on this and that? And like, what? That's all. Like, can you sell yourself? Yeah, that's all it's about. You know what I mean, like you say, bums on seats, it's and bums on seats, just that. Bums on seats. Social media. Mad. But how did how do you react to when you first signed the contract? You said you was getting stopped in the places, autographs, even the crowds, being on TV. Obviously, some people that must crush some people and their right. potential. How did you find all of that so, um, side of things? Well, we're, we're right. So we we went. Shopping, and you, it's just mad. People asking for your autograph, and you're like, This is mad. Then, out of the blue, um, someone went, She just went, Oh, can you sign my breast? Hey, I <laughs> said, so You know, you made it, right? Yeah, and it's, you know, it, was a, it was a lakeside. Was, uh, and most people, well, what I should have done, respectful, you should have gone, Sorry, love, I'm with my, uh, my partner and kids. Uh, <laughs> You said get a pen. pen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so yeah, and um, yeah, but, um, you know what I mean. So that's how you deal with a babe. You just, you just do it. You just do it. <laughs> that babe is part of the job. I yeah. Like, <laughs> it was the, the, the first time I ever got black eye. <laughs> 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 no, nah, but no, nah, but right, I should never have done like. But once again, I was so in the zone of. Mate, this is never going to stop. This, we're going to we uh, going shopping and just not even thinking about what you're spending. Mm. Right, just being. Right. What's the biggest crowd you've walked out to? Like a uh, live ten, ten and a half thousand. And what's you're going through your head like? So you're going out to walk out. No, like, see, I love all that, mate. That's fucking crowd, mad. That's what I can't I, even imagine that. Like, no, but really I, yeah, I, but I, I remember when I boxed on. Um, what like, year was that? Sorry. That was in 2009. Was that televised? Yeah, that was on Sky the, Sports. Yeah, HBO, yeah, HBO. That was right. HBO, yeah. Yeah, it was HBO. Uh, Junior Witter, um, box for the WBC world title. And, um, yeah, I boxed, I got a draw on that night as well. Box terrible. You know when you try to show off and give it to the crowd that you end up going... Trying to put bums on seats, yeah, that's probably what it yeah, is, isn't it? Like, yeah. Literally, in your head, you're thinking, I've got to fucking sell out the next one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it was crazy. It was just... Um, what was your ring song? Uh, like you got to have something to absolutely gas you Oh, that, do you know what? Um, that ring edge, well, I got abused. Well, because of your song ring. choice. So I don't know why, but at the time, I really liked that. You know that song by Alicia Keys, New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so obviously HBO, HBO were, um, American. Yeah, filming it and... Yeah. We're fighting in London. So I come out to New York. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone was like, you English bum. Your PA work is terrible. Who told you to come out to that song? Barry. You're, fight <laughs> 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 you're fighting in the UK and you come out to Alicia, New York. And I'm like, who told you to do that? And it, I, I absolutely got abused. That's hilarious. And yeah, so, um, yeah, absolutely abused, yeah. <laughs> Golly. <Yeah. laughs> Made better song choices yeah. since. Yeah, uh, yeah. I come out to Minus Touch now. Yeah. Everything I touch turns to gold. Hey. So what's uh, so you've got your book, you've got the documentary. When are they? Due We're trying to, come to get out? it all finished for the end of this year. Is that both at the same time? They're going to come out, so you can do like a like a like collab. A, yeah, like yeah, book coming at the same yeah, time. Yeah, same long Where's time. the um? Where's the documentary being published? Is it on Netflix? Fingers crossed. Yeah. Okay. That's where it's going to be, and um, maybe the people talking about ITV as well. So. How far back does that go? The documentary does it film you from like when you were when you were young? Just and before then New York, uh, we moved to Vegas. Wow, it goes back to two thousand nineteen, start of two thousand nineteen. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, it tells it's the whole story. It tells the whole now. story. Yeah, yeah, wicked. So, but as I said, the, the Mayweather name sells a documentary more than what my name does. Yeah, so that's this might help though. The Bitcoin thing well, might help your one, right? Cause yeah, well, loads you know of people what? Watch as, as silly as it sounds, after all the stuff that's been now been happening and it's all everyone else is getting their line right before me and I'm and it was all based around me but everyone else is getting the the um getting the views getting the money and the, the line right out of it first so yeah so hopefully that we, we we get to put a 
put to bed everything and finish finish everything off, and I can help set the kids up and the missus and me. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, you know I mean, so and that's what it's about now. And the autobiography, so that's that, it, that's yeah, hopefully so all at the end yeah, of the month. So, yeah, audible is going to come out an audible as that's well because that, that's yeah, I don't like reading, yeah, I like listening. Yeah, that's what the lady. Uh, yeah, the lady uh, that's doing my um, book. Yeah, she's going to do that. All, yeah. Love so to keep to keep an eye on when the documentary's coming out. Yeah, Best so to follow you on uh, yeah. socials. No doubt, I'll, I'll be boys. I know. Can I come back on your show? <laughs> 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 yeah, well, so what? Hello, yeah, I've got to start selling myself. You know, you know it now, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Bums on seats, that's it. So, how can people find you on Instagram? What's the Instagram? Uh, uh, Real George, yeah, that's, that's very much coming. Thanks, yeah, appreciate yeah, it, yeah. Sick, it's sick, mate. It's fucking sick. Thank you, thank you, man. 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 Thank you